Hey guys, how's it going? This is San Francisco. Some epic graffiti street art here. And I'm heading out to catch a flight to Singapore. In a couple of hours, I'm headed to the airport. It is the morning of October 3rd, and I arrive in Singapore the morning of October 5th. So this is gonna take two days, except not exactly, because I'm flying over the international date line in which the uh, day changes all of a sudden. So it's actually about 24 hours of flight time, and then I skip a day. A beautiful, sunny day here in the city of hills. All right, I gotta get down to the uh, BART station, catch the BART train to SFO, the San Francisco airport. Eastern Airlines. I fly to Qingdao now across the Pacific. Qingdao, Qingdao, something like that. I've never heard of it before. I have a three-hour layover there and it turns out that I have to uh, get my baggage um, there, pick it up and recheck it and that means you have to like leave the international zone to the best of my uh, understanding and then re-enter so that's gonna be interesting and possibly uh, annoying. We shall see.
right, all right, all right, all right. Flight number one done. 12 hours later, I'm hanging in there. Pretty uh, tired out, but I managed to get a little bit of sleep uh, on the flight there. And uh, yeah, it was all right. Watched a couple of movies. I was watching the uh, Everest movie, which was really good, highly recommend it. It is about um, the disastrous climb to the peak of Everest in 1996, in which a bunch of people died. Definitely check it out. That is one reason that I have no plans to try to climb to Everest. One of the many reasons, as well as the cost and um, various other things, but uh, just going to the base camp works for me. I'd like to do that one. I haven't done that yet. I've done other treks in Nepal. Anyways, as you can see, Chinese. So, domestic departures. International. I'm actually not sure if it's domestic. I'm flying to China, so I think it's a domestic considered a domestic flight. Food remit. And so I'm flying to Shanghai and then uh, have another layover there. I have uh, like two hours here and then three hours in Shanghai and then Singapore. China Eastern, Shanghai Airlines domestic departure. So that's probably where I need to be. Warm tip. This counter is only available for widespread flight delays. If you need to get the flight information, please contact with the staff at the boarding gate. Thank you. Welcome to Qingdao. Thanks for the warm tip. So I'm all checked in, everything uh, taken care of there, and now waiting for my flight. Got another hour or so. So, uh, nice to uh, be in China. I am actually officially in China because I had to leave um, China. They actually gave me a visa, like a 24-hour visa. And then uh, this flight is in fact a domestic flight um, to Shanghai. And then I leave China and, and uh, go into the international zone there. I have to pick up my bag again in Shanghai and then recheck it and send it on to Singapore. So, a little annoying extra hassle having to leave uh, security, go back through security, but it's the way it is. Angel Bear, Luck Star. And we got a Starbucks here. They're everywhere. Sandy Beach. Good name for a beach.
And I got some Singapore dollars here. Five dollars. Ten. Fifty. So I uh, went to a currency exchange desk there. Now normally, then I would go to an ATM. There's a couple over there. And uh, put in my debit card and um, get like, you know, 300 bucks cash or something that way. But I'm only here for a day. I'm flying to Thailand tomorrow. And so I don't need uh, that much cash. So I just went to currency exchange with some US dollars, gave them $80 US, and I got 105 Singaporean um, dollars back here. That might actually end up being a little bit more than I need, but if I pay for my uh, hotel with this, then it might be uh, pretty close because I have a uh, hotel, a private room reserved tonight, uh, and then I will be uh, taking the train back to uh, the airport tomorrow. And so here is the train to the city. So going to uh, Little India where my hotel is, and uh, see what the situation is with checking into my hotel because it is like six in the morning. I was thinking that my uh, flight arrived at 8.30, but it turned out that it arrived at uh, 5.30. Either way, it was gonna be a question when I could get into my hotel room, but now it's really um, way too early. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet because the check-in time is two o'clock in the afternoon. They said maybe they can get me in there earlier. I'm just gonna get there and uh, find some breakfast and check things out. I'm doing all right, all considering uh, I just spent 26 hours in transit there, but I got the seat next to me uh, free on that last flight there. And so I was able to lay down, kinda sorta slept-ish, but at least you know got some rest. That was a five hour flight uh, there. So anyway, time to get rolling. And so I got my ticket here. It was 470 Singaporean dollars, so that's about $4 US. And that is return to uh, little India where I'm going and then coming back tomorrow. That's awesome. I thought it might be like 10 bucks, 15 bucks or something to um, go from the airport into town. So nice and cheap. Bangkok. And Krabby. That's where I'm flying tomorrow. On Air Asia. Here I am, officially in Singapore. This is awesome. It is nice and warm, even though it's uh, early in the morning. And so I'm in the general Little India neighborhood. My hotel is around here somewhere, I have no idea. I'll check that later. Priority for now is find some breakfast. I guess I'm appropriately dressed for Little India. Got my Ganesha Hindu God t-shirt on. And so I've been here before. I was last here in Singapore in 2010, around the same time, maybe like in November, for five days. So I did a, a fair amount of exploring then. All right, this looks like a uh, good breakfast possibility. Well, they might only have a Asian breakfast. Looks good though. Nasi goreng and me goreng set meal. And they're playing Indian music. I am in Asia. Love the colors here. But I'm going to uh, find a little bit nicer place to sit down and take a seat. There's a uh, Another street that's like more of kind of the central travelers area. Try to find that and maybe there will be a more 
Western restaurant with, I want to get an omelet and take a seat inside and relax for a bit. Okay, I just switched over to my GoPro camera. If you can see the difference. If anyone noticed that I uh, changed, I started using the GoPro at the beginning and then uh, switched back to my Icontext camera. The reason is that I discovered already that I have a problem with the GoPro. There's a problem with the audio. I was listening back to uh, those videos that I recorded just like walking around San Francisco and the audio just faded out all of a sudden and then came back a couple of seconds later. It did that like three or four times in the course of one of those videos. And so I didn't want to take a chance that uh, I lost some of the um, audio on this trip here. And so I switched over to my Icontex and then the battery ran out. I have other batteries, but I thought that I would go back to the GoPro, show the difference, explain you know, what happened there. Also, the GoPro definitely does just capture the uh, colors better. So. Hopefully it was just a one-time random thing, but... Amazing. And that, my friends, is called a lassie. Indian yogurt drink. Got some toast here. And an omelet is coming. Not a good spot here. And a veggie omelet with some interesting veggies. There's like peas and corn. Not sure what else exactly. And not sure what this all is going to cost yet, but I'll let you know. And so this is the place, Al Bisney restaurant. And the total bill was 12 Singaporean dollars. And I know that doesn't sound particularly cheap, but I had uh, two omelets and $12 Singaporean is $8.80 US. So about $9 for um, two omelets, a lassi drink, and a toast. So even though it is Little India, it is definitely not India cheap, but that still isn't uh, too expensive, especially if you compare it to Europe or something. That would have been like 20 bucks for, you know, two omelets and a drink and everything. So anyways, it's now time to find my hotel. It is just a short uh, ways from here, 0.3 miles. I'm not sure which direction. That is what the phone is for. So here you have a Methodist church. Right there is the Sri Durga temple, so that's Hindu. Here is Muslim food and Indian food. The place that I uh, had breakfast I think was Muslim. It was called Al Basimi or something like that. And there was a mosque uh, nearby. So that in a nutshell gives you a little taste of uh, Singapore here. And also explains one reason that it is a country of its own, even though it is just a relatively small island off of the coast of Malaysia here, because it is extremely ethnically, religiously uh, mixed, and also because it is a economic uh, powerhouse. It has the highest per capita income of any uh, country in Asia, and the official language is English. Just because it is such a hodgepodge of uh, different uh, cultures. You know, there's the little India, there's a Chinatown. I was looking online and it is actually 30% Buddhist. That is the largest religion of Singapore is Buddhism. I had no idea. Muslim is only like 15% and Hindu is only 5%. So it is a really unique place. And also a very well uh, organized city. All right, I am hoping to hell that uh, my hotel can let me in there. It's a little after nine o'clock and I am officially wiped out and I'm sure that I look like it. I feel like total scum pretty much after a day and a half traveling. And here we are, the Golden Royal Hotel. And there are lots of restaurants around here. A Muslim restaurant. Kira Jill looks pretty tasty. And then lots of other ones 
up and down these various streets here. All right, time to try my luck here, see if I can get in a room. And so here's the room, or the bathroom rather. Shower is pouring right onto the floor there, as is often the case in uh, Asian bathrooms and hotels or even in um, private homes. A little annoying, you get the uh, wet floor. They provide some slippers here for when the floor is wet. But anyways, this is the room, pretty cool. It's a little bit small, but it's perfect for uh, one or two people. And as you can see, there is no window, which uh, could be annoying, but in my case, and it was perfect because, uh, you know, flying in in the morning and then having to uh, sleep during the day, then it's perfect to not have a uh, window for light coming in as well as noise. And so, fortunately, then they were able to check me in at uh, 9.30 this morning when I showed up. Otherwise, I don't know what I uh, would have even done if I'd had to, uh, you know, wait around until like 2 in the afternoon. I probably would have gone and found a hostel or something. Um, but fortunately, that worked out. So, uh, really cool to finally have uh, ended that crazy journey flying all the way from San Francisco to Singapore, Asia. This room is $80 Singaporean, and so that's about like $55 US. So that's reasonably priced, I guess. It's pretty uh, average, really. Maybe a little bit cheaper than it would be in San Francisco or London, certainly. Or But Singapore is definitely not super cheap. It is certainly one of the more expensive countries in uh, Asia. So I'm now going to head out and uh, do some more exploring. I just have this evening, and then I fly to uh, Thailand tomorrow. So I'm going to make a separate video just walking around this evening. It is almost 6 o'clock um, at this point. I've been hanging out here for a bit after uh, taking a nap. And so uh, check the link down below if you want to see a little taste of Singapore. I'm just going to cruise around a bit randomly, nothing uh, too comprehensive, and give a little taste of these cities. So I hope you enjoyed this video flying halfway around the world. Stay tuned for more videos from Thailand and elsewhere in Asia. Take it easy.